Thomas, hello. Um, the side Ben Rama deal to West Ham. Um, West Ham say he hasn't failed his medical, but it feels like there's been an issue. Do you know what's going on? Uh, I know one thing is um, it's sure that uh, that how can I say we are speaking to, to West Ham about potentially selling uh, say to West Ham. Um, and let's see what's happening. We all know that for a fact, five o'clock. And if you're a West Ham player, I speak about that tomorrow. If you're a Brentford player, I'll speak about that tomorrow. Because there's no no reason to speak about things when it's not decided one way or another. But fitness wise, there's nothing wrong with him as far as you're concerned, is there? I mean he had an ankle problem at the start of last season, but we're fine. As as far as I know, he played minutes for us against Preston, he played started against uh, I can't remember the team they played with Algeria and he played the last two minutes against Mexico, so so you don't think that West Ham are trying to renegotiate the deal and maybe not the price down? First and foremost, that's one of the privileges I have as a head coach. And they will negotiate these things and I think it's... Uh, I'm glad I'm not doing that. I'm focusing on what I can do on the pitch. If uh, Saif Ben Rama does leave the club today though, what would you say about his contribution um, over the last year? I, I think it's obviously that I think Saif's been one of them the best players in, in this division um, for the last two seasons and I think actually I think last year he, he stood out even more, um, not only with his goals and assists, but also his, his trickery and his one-on-one -one situations, um, his skills, uh, but also I think he showed um, uh, a development in terms of pressing and work ethic and, and, and be a, 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 a really good team player. If the figures are right though, it's another spectacular financial success for the club, isn't it? Um, I think we proved to no, we developed uh, over the last years, and I think it's remarkable that we maybe are going to sell uh, two players to the Premier League for record sales from the Championship. Um, any other Brentford players likely to be leaving by the end of today? Do you think? No. Incoming? No. Absolutely, no one coming in. None. What would your observations be then on the transfer window, which has seen you lose Watkins and, and Ben Rama, possibly? I think that we have done well. Um, we've said from the beginning that two of them could potentially go if the, the right bid was there. Um, I think we um, added uh, quality to the squad and step with Ivan Tony uh, early um, from um, instead of uh, Oli and uh, Simon Connors uh, instead of uh, Said. And I also think it was more or less like a new transfer getting Sergi Canos back from. Uh, from a long-term injury, um, and top of that, we, we added um, um, uh, with Vitali Janel uh, for, for the midfield and um, and Charlie Good um, to to help us in the, in the central defence. I don't forget anyone. Right? <laughs> 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 uh, so uh, and also we were pleased. I think we have a, a good squad. Even with those signings, so do you really think you can emulate what you did last season without Watkins and, and Ben Rama? I'm focusing on winning on tomorrow against country. And the team news for that match is, uh, is what? Uh, everyone is available, apart from Nash Rawlsley we know about, Shannon Baptiste we know about, uh, he's by the way closer, and Christian Nargali. So, so Rico, Christian Nargali is uh, out for six, eight weeks. So Rico Henry back in the squad? Back in the squad, yeah. Um, a couple of the guys obviously had a good night at Wembley. Um, you must have enjoyed that too, didn't you? Oh yeah. Of course, I think it's a, it's a good win from Denmark. Of course, we're pleased with that, and I'm pleased that we have uh, players involved in, um, in the squad. And just on the league situation and this game with Coventry, I mean, how are you approaching this one after four points from the first four games? Um, I think, like, if we had 12 points for the first four games, we'll do the very best to, to win it. Um, that's the focus. We, we know. We know that um, I think in terms of performance um, so far in, in the games we played this season, uh, the four games in Championship and the four games in Carabao Cup, there's only one I'm disappointed with. That's the game against Preston. Um, and for me, I'm 100% sure it will be a, a one-off. Uh, not that we can't lose a, another match, but uh, in terms of we conceded four goals, we haven't done that in two years uh, with me um, in charge of the team. Uh, last year we didn't concede three goals uh, in the whole Championship season. Um, so, so for me, we need to get back on on track, that, that was one thing on the defensive side, but, but mainly I want us to dominate tomorrow, uh, the game from the first minute, and, and that's it with the biggest respect from Coventry, because I, I think they're a very good side, and um, I think they, they've done well the first four games, I really like their style of play, I think uh, Mark Robinson made a good job there, in terms of, uh, I like they, they want to 
they want to play with the ball, they want to press. Um, and I think they are, uh, of course, they, they want to, how can you say, stay in the championship. And I think they have a very, very good chance. I think they will be comfortable um, in that aspect. Just finally, Thomas, it's been a, a week of uh, amazing revelations about the future of uh, English football, possibly. What have you made of the uh, project big picture revelations and also the calls now for an independent regulator to take control of English football? It's a big question for a head coach uh, of uh, Brentford and also being a, a Dane. Uh, I love English football. I uh, want the best for English football. I think English football is a huge part of, of the football in general in the world. Um, and we have, uh, I can say we even, I'm Danish, you know, because I'm, I'm working in this country, we have the best league in the world and uh, potentially uh, the sixth or seventh best league as well in, in terms of the championship. Um, so we have a remarkable product uh, in this country. Um, uh, the good thing is that is people in this club, of course, they like to be involved in, in the decision or uh, how, how, how we can affect uh, English football and I, I guess they do that together with the other people in charge of the other clubs and then hopefully find the best thing for the top and the bottom and uh, the best for English future. Did you like though some of what you heard about uh, Project Big Picture, you know, the £250 million bailout for the EFL and 25% you know, of the future TV deal, I mean it's a lifesaver for some of the EFL clubs isn't it? Yeah. I'm not going too much into detail about the big picture uh, deal or, or suggestion. Uh, I just know that it's, a, it's the, a constant question, not only asked in England, as I know also from Denmark, how do we do the best for the top clubs that need you know, to push and promote the, the country? And how do we make sure that all the, everything from the, from the smaller clubs to the grassroots clubs and you know, make the, 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 the foundation for the football in the country, how do we make sure you lift that? and, and Make sure the distance are not too big. That's a, a very, very difficult uh, question. It's almost like Brexit, so uh, I guess that's going to be a tough one. Thank you. Hi, Thomas. Um, just in regards to that, the, the value of the pyramid is something that, that Brentford certainly has benefited from. Obviously, talking about Ollie, who comes from Exeter, goes eventually to Aston Villa, Rico, who comes in, obviously, new signings even this, this summer, for example. It is an area that, that Brentford have used as a recruiting area to bring players in from lower down the pyramid. It shows the value of having football that goes very deep. 100%. I think that, you know, constantly we're saying, ah, okay, we know all the players uh, in the country and uh, not only us, but, you know, all clubs are saying that we know everyone from uh, Conference League and up or, you know, um, or especially the players who've been in the, in the academies and coming through the ranks and all that. But there's constantly example of conference player or League Two players, you know, 21, 2, 3, 4 years old going uh, up to the next step in League One or Championship or Premier League. Um, so th I think it's, it's a massive area that we need to be aware of and, and, um, and, and take care of and help um, what the exact plan or strategy should be or how much money they should have. That will always be a negotiation uh, point, of course. Um, and, and sustainability is a word that is used a lot in football. Obviously, it's being used a lot in regards to the world as a whole at the moment. And the model that, that Brentford have is, is one model that football clubs can, can work by, but it's a model that you seem to, you seem to enjoy working with. What, what's, what's positive about the, the Brentford model from your point of view, having worked with it now for years? I think, of course, people need to understand there's something they've been working on in the club for, let's say, at least 10 years. And in, I would say, even more depth the last six, seven years. And we got up to an even higher level in the last three, four years. Um, and now we are uh, very aligned through the club and we're very. Um, aware of where we need to also improve, uh, but also what 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 um, we will do if we let's say transfer window. But that that's one thing in terms of you know buying players and selling players. Uh, so they, they need to fit into our style of play and the role and all that. But it's also how do we make sure we develop the players because that's the next part. It's not not okay we buy them and then we. Uh, 
uh, put them in the team and then everything will take care of itself. So no, it demands a lot of work for, from a lot of people, uh, fantastic staff I have every single day um, at the training ground to, to get them to, to that next level. Um, but I think it's, um, it's a very detailed model that will take that take a lot of time and years and experience um, in, in the club, you know, over time to get more and more experience about it, to, to, to make sure it comes to a, to a high level, and then to maintain it. That, that's, the, that's the tricky part, to maintain it years in, years out. Um, and in regards to Christian Norgaard, um, as you say, he's going to be out for a bit of time. Um, you've got a strong squad and you believe in your squad of players and, and someone will step into that role. But how much of a loss is he, not just what he does as a player, but he is part of the leadership group as well. So that that leadership element is is something that has to be replaced to a certain extent. Yeah, no, hundred uh, percent. There's no no doubt that um, the, the four main figure uh, persons in that leadership group is you know uh, Pontus, Henry, Christian, uh, David, and I think actually Luke Daniels have a big part of that without being mm -hmm. a part of the, the the four because you have a massive experience as a as a player and as a person. Uh, but one of the one of the main leaders is not on the pitch. Uh, others need to step up and take uh, more responsibility. I, I need to see more personality from a Matty Jens, Matthias Jensen, or or Justa Silva, um, or other players on the on, on the pitch. Uh, Hundred percent, we, we need that. Um, and in terms of you know uh, Christian not playing, of course, it's we, we need we need another player to step into his position. And, um, and we know that Matthias can, can do a job there. We know Shandon have done a, done a job there. And uh, there's no secret that um, Vitelli um, Janelle is a player in his best position is, is a six. And he's been looking really, really good in training. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to present him for the fans um, in, 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 in the near future. I'm 100% sure he will play a big part of, uh, of that and he will help us. And he's part of the, the squad tomorrow. And did Ivan, did the, did the international break actually come at the wrong time for Ivan, having just you know started getting the, the goal scoring ball rolling, you know, helps with confidence, and suddenly there's a break. So yeah. uh, you'll hope that that break won't won't affect that, and the momentum he can have as an individual can, can continue now. Uh, yeah, hopefully. Um, um, I I think he you know you know progressively have done better game by game uh, in terms of the, the key areas um, I, I want to see, uh, his link of play, his yeah, abilities to press and the, the, the triggers and uh, the timing and that and, um, and then uh, working on, on the last line and arriving in the box, that's the, the three main areas um, I'm, I'm working on with him and I think he's done better and better and I think he, he scored two really good goals against Preston, hopefully he can he can keep that up, two goals and average, that'll be nice uh, over the next uh, games, <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> and Coventry, very impressive last year and, and anyone who saw them probably wouldn't be surprised that they got promoted last year because of, uh, of the way that they, they've been played, uh, they've played. And they've taken to this season very positively as well, they've got a very positive approach to, to the way that they play football, so they're dangerous opponents. 100% I have the biggest respect for, for Coventry. Um, I really, really like their style of play. Um, I think they, they will, how can you say, um, not only suit the championship, but they will, they will add something to the championship. Um, and they will be a very difficult task because they, they want to play, they are brave, they have the abilities um, to do it, um, but also they want to press forward. So I think they really play an attractive uh, brand of football. and. Uh, Hopefully we can go for it. Of course we prepare for it, um, and and we want to take initiative tomorrow. We need to go come back on track and and, and dominate that game uh, from from the end to from the start to the end. We know it'll be difficult, but um, that's the end.